Steve, this is Matt from the Man Cave. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching with your daily devotion for October the 20th. Hope you're having an excellent day. Guys, I was talking to my wife this morning. She said this. She, she said, hey, those shorts you're wearing, they have a few holes in them. Um, these are like my favorite shorts. Three quarters of the devotions that I've done here in the Man Cave have been in these... Uh, I won't use the words that she used, and they weren't profanity, but here's the thing. You don't talk about a man's shorts that are in the man cave that he loves. I've just grown attached to these shorts, and here's hey, the thing. Hey, today we're going to be, you're like, Matt, why are you telling us this? I just, I just, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Maybe your wife does the same thing, and I was just trying to bond with you, you know? As your wife go through your clothes, your favorites, when they're stained or ripped, and she wants to throw them out, or have you ever had your wife throw something out without permission? You're like, where's my favorite shirt, honey? You mean the one with stains and holes? In it? Yeah, that one. You know, the one I mow the grass in. My favorite shirt. Where is it? I, I used it as a dust rag and then I throw it out. Why? Are you kidding me? Why did you do that? I don't know why women do that. Were they trying to clean up their cell, clean us up a little bit? You know, here's the thing. Well, I, I understand it because it's date your mate. You know what I'm saying? Treat her the same on the first day when you marry her as 20 years down the road. That's a free tip. That's a free tip of the day in the man cave. Treat your wife like a princess and be a great father to your children. Hey, again, we're going to be in Haggai. Isn't that crazy? That reminds me of like, uh, Haggai. Oh, it reminds me of like karate or something. But we're going to be in the book of Haggai and it's a great text. Today we're going to be in Haggai. Haggai chapter 2 verse 19 it reads like this it's a great ver we were in Haggai oh there we are there we are don't 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 did you turn me off okay don't turn me off it says this Tracy sometimes if I'm um, fumbling around she'll click me off you know what I'm saying don't don't click me off honey you know what I'm saying and, and and you in the man cave don't click me off and thank you for posting the videos it reads like this you're like Matt get on with the verse of the day okay I, I hear you look at look at I hear you I hear you okay it says from this day will I bless you that's it? Yeah, that's it. From this day on, will I bless you? It doesn't say on. It says, from this day, I will bless you. And you're like, well, what does that mean? Here's, our, here's the question. What day? That's what I want. When I read this text, I want to know, from what day will you bless me? Because right now, I'm already blessed. Okay, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. But he's saying this. This is more of a materialistic thing that God is talking about, meaning he's going to open up the vault doors of heaven, and he's going to pour down the blessings of his favor, okay? And goodness and mercy are going to chase you down. What day is it? I don't know. You're like, what do you, Matt, why are we even having this conversation today? You don't know? I want to know what that day is. Let me ask you this. Let's say that day was three years from now. How would you act between now and then? Let's say three years from now, God says, from this day on, I'm going to bless you. Meaning, I will have performed, okay, and completed the things I needed to complete in your life. And because you're fighting me, uh, it's going to take about three years to prepare you to receive all the blessings that I have for you. H how, would it change anything in your life? I mean, honestly, think about it. What if God says, hey, from this day on, because see, God sees in light of what? You already know the answer. We went over this. He sees in light of eternity. So he says, in four years, three months, 16 days, Joe out there. I got to change the name, Joe. Um, someone send me their name and I'll start using them. Mike, there's a guy named Mike. I think it's Mike. Mike emails me all the time. We'll use Mike, okay? From this day forward, Mike, in seven years, 16 days or whatever, okay, I'm going to bless you. And you're like, Matt, what gives? Why is it taking six years? Are you kidding me? I don't know, Mike, what's going on in your life that it's taking that long for God to want to open the heavens to bless you with all of what he has for you. There's something in Mike's life, or let's go back to Joe, because I don't want Mike getting mad at me or Larry or whoever's watching. Okay, God has to perfect these certain things in us before he can bless us fully. But wouldn't it be funny if he said this? He says, it's, it's five years down the road. It's going to take me this long because you're fighting me. Because you're fighting me in the man cave. You're fighting me because I want to do certain things in your life, but you're bucking the system. You're kicking against the goads like with Paul. Okay, You're kicking against the pricks. Okay, Meaning you're kicking back like the ox would kick back Okay, uh, against the farmer. And as he kicked back, that's what they call kicking against the pricks, kicking against the goads. The more he kicked back, the more he hurt himself. But that's what you and I are doing. And so it's taking long. But let's just say, hypothetically, God... God says, hey, uh, six years. After six years, God's going to speak this word. From this day will I bless you. Meaning he's going to, you're going to really be blessed like you and I are thinking in our mind. You know what I'm saying? We're already, again, we're already blessed in Christ, in the heavenlies, okay? Why is it taking that long, Matt? Again, I don't know. Why is it taking that long? Why is it taking that long? What if you were having a, a talk with God? You say, God, I want to talk to you about this five-year thing. I don't want to wait five years. He says, okay. And he sits down. You're sitting across the table. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> God's, there. God's sitting right there. Uh, can I get you a cup of coffee? Uh, God, uh, I just had one question. 
why five years? You're fighting me. There's, there's things I need to do in your life and things that you need to learn as soon as I accomplish that in your life. From this day I will bless you in the way you want to be blessed. God can ask a question. What if I start listening all the time, start doing everything you say, and I don't fight you anymore? Would that change things? Would that change things? What if God did this? Uh, can I ask one more question, God? How much would that change things? A lot. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying, guys? God has spoken this over you already. But He can change the date of that if you want to hearken then to His voice. Let's say it's two years down the road, okay? But between now and then, there are things he absolutely has to teach you as a child or you can't accept what he's going to give you. Do you understand? But what if you got on the program, okay, and started really selling out to God and I mean really hearkening and I'm not talking about legalistic. I'm not talking about you being a monk. I'm not talking about you being something that you're not. What I'm talking about is you cultivating that relationship with God and building that relationship with God and doing the things that you know to do. And when he speaks into your life, you immediately obey him, okay? And you learn and you move forward. And when you sin, you keep the shortest list with God. It's not even funny. You're on your hands and knees. Lord, I did this. I was stupid. Please forgive me. I'm turning from that. Help me not for to do that again. I fell into sin. And then you go to men that are godly and you make yourself accountable. God highly respects that. Why? Because he knows you value his word. When, when you have that stronghold, when you have this problem in your life, and every man I know has one, where you're vulnerable to a certain area, you go to godly men within your church, or so, not just anybody. Don't spill your guts to anybody because everybody will know your business and you'll stop going to that church. Okay? Because they're blabbermouths. They're gossips. Okay? They're whispers. That's what the Bible would say. But you go to godly men and say, hey, in this area of my life, I'm really struggling. Would you make me accountable, okay? I, I want you to make me accountable to you and ask me the hard questions, okay? You want four or five, 10, 15 of those men in your life. Tell them, I, 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 I like women. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I like looking at women or I like this or whatever it is that's got a hold of you, okay? You will shrink the time down because you're doing things according to God and His will and His program. You're not kicking against the pricks. You're not fighting God. So instead of being six years or four years or five years, you might find God speaking that word and you wake up one morning and it's payday. You're like, what do you mean? I like payday. Do you? Because we went over that a day ago. I like payday when it's God's payday, not when it's the wages of sin's payday. You realize that? Are you, are you hearing me? Guys, I want to share this with you because a, a lot of people are really foggy about this, okay? In between here and here, when you come into the day where God speaks the word, from this day I will bless you, okay? From this day to this day, watch what happens. What's going on? Uh, there's a lot of loss. You're like, well, I don't like that. Well, you've already experienced it. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of things that happen to you. And you're scratching your head and you're not understanding it. God says, I will restore what the locusts have eaten. Okay, I will restore you. But here's the thing. During the process in which you are learning, during that season in which you are learning, being matured, being molded, okay, being built back up into the man of God, a man of integrity, okay, and a man after God's own heart, like he said unto David, during this time, in this time, a lot, there's a lot of loss. Okay, there's a lot of things that take place. And here's the thing, God is looking at your response. Are you going to get bitter? Are you going to be forgiving? Okay, are you going to move forward? Are you going to be held up on this materialistic thing? But there is a time, okay, there is a point in time when you hit a day, okay, where he says, from this day I will bless you. And he restores everything that has been taken from you during these seasons. Do you understand it? Give God a hallelujah and a praise the Lord. Okay, because a lot of you have lost in life, whether it was a messy divorce, whether it was a job loss, whether it was some kind of sickness or disease, or whether it was a person. I don't know what it is, but here's the thing. You are in a season of learning, okay? You are in this transition, but there's going to be a day in the future that God knows we are blinded to the date. We can shorten the date by hearkening unto the voice of God and the ways of God, okay, in His Spirit, okay? But if we just dilly-dally around, that day could be even pushed back 
further, okay? God has to. Look at me. God has to accomplish certain things in your life. And if he doesn't, he's sabotaging you. And you're like, what do you mean by that? If God was to bless you with all that he has for you right now, when you're not prepared, you would forsake him in two seconds. You would go to the gods of the world. You, you, would, you don't need God anymore when you've got zeros behind your bank account, when everything's paid for, when you have perfect health. So many people forsake God in blessings. The greatest test isn't poverty. The greatest test is when God opens the floodgates of heaven on you. That's the greatest test. Are you grounded? Will you stick it out? Do you realize that you are just a steward, that he is everything? Is it going to affect you? Friends, you should act the same whether you have $10 million in the bank or $10 in the bank. There should be no difference. Do you understand? There should be no difference in your life. And if you're thinking, well, the difference is I got this huge house. Why do you have the huge house? God's not against the huge house. Is it to brag? Do you need 15 bedrooms? Do you have to have five pools? I mean, why do you want what you want? Is it a look at me kind of deal? Because here's the thing, all through life, you've been struggling and you want to show people, I made it. Friends, you're never going to make it. If that's your attitude, if that's why you have to have that house, you're never going to make it. Friends, do you understand? God has no problem blessing you with nice things, but if, if your justification for those nice things is to look at me, that's idolatry. We tend to fall into that category all the time. You know what I'm saying? I want to just ask you a quick question. Why do you want what you want in this life? I mean, I want you to analyze why the things that you want, your desires, your goals, your passions, why do you want those things? Well, look at the justification. Oftentimes our justification is wrong. So God is holding up until your justification is what? Right. And again, he has no problem with you having a big house. But if that in your heart of hearts, which he can see and I cannot, if it is to brag and to show your family that you become something or your neighbor that you're someone, it's a problem. You don't understand who you are in Christ. Friends, I don't have to have a house and a car to justify who I am in Christ. I am wonderfully loved, okay, and chosen by Almighty God. Do you understand? I'm somebody because of him, not because of anything down here on earth. This is tin, plastic, rubber, steel, bricks. Are you kidding me? It's all materialistic. I'm not taking any of it to heaven. Do I want this item so I can brag? It is the car I'm driving so I can say, I've made it. Friends, here's the thing. You could have a billion dollars and you haven't made it. Well, you're like, Matt, what are you talking about? Friends, I make it when I take my last breath here and I open my eyes in heaven. See, it's a race. Paul talks about it being a race. It is those who continue to the end that will be saved. God will not sabotage his children. He's not going to load you up. He's actually holding back on you. And you're like, what? Oh, yeah. Have you ever noticed how the world seems very successful and how they seem to have everything? They seem to have everything, but they really have nothing because they don't have a personal relationship with God. Yet, I'm struggling and I'm a child of God. You're not struggling. You're in Christ. He's holding back. It's all yours. He has a, he has a count number with your name on it. He's waiting for you to learn the lessons to get in right relationship because when I'm in right listen, when I'm in right relationship, I'm going to see as he sees. And yes, I want a beautiful house and I want a car. Is the money in the bank wrong? No. The money in the bank's wrong if it's here's the thing I don't need you, God. I got it from here. Do you see what I'm saying? We are hindering, we are sabotaging ourselves, and God has to hold back on us. He's not gonna, He's not gonna run you into a wall. Okay? So what do I do? Get on the same page with Almighty God. Do it His way, His will. And you guys, you already know where you're fighting God. Don't, don't look, 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 look. I'm, not, I'm talking to people in the man cave and some wives. But listen, listen, listen. You already know what God wants you to do. And you're like, oh, he wants me to go to Africa and be a missionary. Did he tell you that? No, I just guessed. He doesn't want you to go to Africa. Why? Because it's not in your heart. He, 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 will, he will change your desires to want to do things. That's how he leads us. That's how he guides us. He moves the hearts of kings and rulers. He's not going to tell me something. You know what I'm saying? That's not his will. You know what he might? He might want you to just be a godly person working at your same company, but you're the number one guy, and you're giving praise and glory to God. I mean, why does everyone think they're going to Africa or Saudi Arabia? Man, I don't want to go to Saudi Arabia and get my head chopped off and have to pull out my Bruce Lee skills. No, that was a joke. But do you see what I'm saying? 99% of the time, that's not what he's asking us to do. He's just asking us to what? Rest, abide, learn, love him. Build the relationship. Do it his way. Stop fighting him. Stop putting things in this world above him. And that's what you've been doing. 
Yes, yes. You've been putting your desires and your passions above him. Stop doing that. You shorten the time. He speaks the word over you. You enter into that day. And from then on, oh yeah, baby. Can you give me an example in the Bible? I can. Do you want it or no? I can. Do you want an example in the Bible? Like that, it changed for a guy. Do you want the example? You, do you? Job. Job was doing everything right. Look at, look at, Job was doing everything that he knew to do was right, but there was still room for God to work on him, okay? I mean, he, as far as men go, God, God said he was a man of integrity, ran a rave, I mean, he was doing it all the right way, but he still was not perfect. He was a sinner just like me and you. God allows everything to be taken away. Some of you have lost everything. God allows sickness into his life. Some of you have gotten sick or know someone that's gotten sick, okay? But then God asked something that was so great of Job that beforehand he could have never done it before this story ever started. And what was that? While he's going through all of this suffering, he has three so-called friends who are just jabbing the dagger into his back, jamming him so hardcore it's not even funny. Job, you're such a rotten low-life sinner. You're hiding your sin. That's why God did this to you, you low life. You let I mean they they are not friends at all. And the whole time Job is saying, I want an audience with God. I want an audience with God. And he finally got an audience with God. He's finally sitting across the table and he's having a little chit-chat. You know what Job says? I've spoken one too many times. I will zip my trap. Job says this, I've spoken of things that are too wonderful for me to even understand or conceive, okay? I've spoken once, I will not say a word. God says this, okay? Pray for those three guys. And it says, God accepted Job after he prayed for those guys. Do you imagine that? These were the people who betrayed him. These were the guys that stabbed him in the back. And God, he said, are you kidding me? But he had gone through so much in that season, he was able to do the hardest thing he ever had to do. He prayed for the people who betrayed him and stabbed him in the back and just jammed it to him, guys. They jammed it to him. Who else? And it says this, God accepted Job. What is that? From this day on, I will bless you. If you read the last chapter of Job, read it. Chapter 42 of the book of Job. He was restored, and God says this, he lived a full life, meaning this, the, within those words, he lived a full life, you know what it means? It means that at the end of his life, he felt like God had made it up to him, meaning God had restored what the locusts have eaten, he blessed him beyond what he was already blessed, but now he had new eyes to see through the suffering, he saw things differently. If we, again, in the Bible, if we go to the story of Joseph, the same exact thing happens. Joseph's given a dream, but he's not ready for the dream, okay? He can't handle it yet, okay? And so what ends up happening? He, he's betrayed by his brothers, the people who are supposed to love him the most. You guys know what I'm talking about because many of you have been betrayed. He's thrown into a well, he's dug out, he's sold as a, a slave, he ends up in Egypt, 13 years in jail, 13 years and shackles and iron shackles around his neck, his ankles and his wrist, okay? And one day, the day that God had set aside for him to be blessed, he's called up to Pharaoh, he interprets a dream, Pharaoh makes him number two in command, and I, I tell you what, it's in your life as well, guys. There is a date that God has spoken over your life, and yes, I truly believe if you will hearken unto the word of the Lord and get on the same page with God and stop fighting God, that that distance will shorten. What What's the date? That's where we started. I don't know the date. Leave me alone. I'm just mad in the man cave. I don't know your date. I don't know my date, but I know this. I've seen other people's dates. Matt, I've seen it. I've seen rags to riches like that, meaning this. They just were where they needed to be with God. They had learned the life lessons. They'd gone through the storm. They were in the valley. They suffered greatly. God used the suffering to purify them. They'd been through the fire, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Boom! You can't, you can't figure it out. There's no figuring out what God does and why he does what he does and when he does what he does. But one day to the next, I've seen a guy that has nothing have everything. And within a year, he's married. Within a, look at, look at, within two years, he has children. He, he has all the things that, God, that you and I would like in this life, okay? On top of the greatest gift that we've already received freely, which is Christ. Are you with me? Are, are you with me? So what are you going to do from here on out? I mean, really, you know what the best thing to do? God, what's the date? What's the date that you will speak that over my life? I doubt he will tell you, but I tell you what. 
because it, it might frustrate you and it might defeat you. But if you will hearken and do it his way, that date that he has spoken will come sooner than you think. Okay? It, look, I'm not lying to you. It really will. Okay? Hey, that help you out? That kind of give you some insight why you're going through what you're going through and what, everything in the past? It, it, you know what I'm saying? When I understood this concept, it really, it was freeing. It was like that bondage, that weight had been lifted off of me. Now I just need to rest, get on the same page as God, and, and do the things that I know to do. Okay, one of them. You know what? I don't need to go on all of them. I, you want me to? No, no. You're like, Matt, no, it's kind of, we've gone long on this one. I fully understand your time. Hey, thanks for watching the videos, guys. Keep on posting the comments. I love the comments. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And I really love when you guys post them, okay? Especially if they're decent. And I never know what you guys like. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, it's like a dart on the board. You know what I'm saying? I'm throwing it. So it's funny. Some of the devotions I think I, re I really like, okay? And, you know, no one likes them. And then other ones I think, oh my goodness, I, I, just, I didn't get enough sleep. And like everyone's like, man, that was crazy cool, Matt. Who knows? Hey, I hope this helped you out. This is Matt. Where? 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 In the man cave.